Hey everybody, this is Brian from PNB Homesteading, and I wanted to give the large update or <laughs> the update for the large grow tent and uh, show the the watering for the. Uh, I kind of did a short video yesterday that I uploaded for the uh, the new herbs that I've planted in here in replacement of the uh, the sickly spinach. <laughs> so I guess that's what we could call that. But uh, let me grab a camera and I'll uh, give you a tour of it. So kind of first to start out is I showed you guys yesterday. The, uh, the new watering system I had plumbed in here. So I'm using my extra uh, 24 volt uh, orbit watering solenoid here. I hook this up and I'm running another line inside the tent and you can see I've got a new drip line going across there and I've got that on a different setting on my Galcon programmer up here. So this is what I use for controlling my watering. You can have up to six different zones or six different solenoids with this particular unit. And right now, uh, yesterday I was telling in the video that I've got the herbs set on a two second uh, duration with a 10 minute cycle rate. So every 10 minutes, these nozzles will mist water on top of these little propagation areas for the seeds for 10, every 10 minutes for two seconds. So that's gonna be, uh, and it looks like so far, it's keeping it pretty moist. I may need to adjust a few of these so you can see a few little dry spots around the edge. But uh, overall, it looks like that one there, it kind of curved over, so I'm gonna have to readjust him. But uh, he still, still looks like it's keeping it pretty wet there. But I'm assuming that most of that misting spray is shooting over into that bed there. So I'll have to readjust that. But uh, you can see they're, they're pretty moist and I think I should get pretty good germination out of these. So by next week's video update, I should be able to give you guys a progress update and see if the, uh, the germination is taking hold inside of here, because uh, right now I've got the temperature in the tent to set to, I and mean, you can see that thing, it looks like it's cycling here through the camera, but it actually is a steady, you know, I guess the hertz rate for that cycling is being picked up on the 60 frames per second of this camera. But anyway, I've got it set to be a 72 degrees inside the tent, and then it has a variation of, uh, for cold, I let it go down 8 degrees below that, so it gets down to 64. And uh, the high will get up to about 76, I think, is a high before the, the, uh, the big fans kick on in the back. So I keep it in that temperature range zone between 64 and uh, 76. So that should be okay for tomatoes because, you know, any, anything lower than, I believe, 62 can start to hinder off your production in your tomato plants. But as you can see, I bring a camera in the tent here. I'm not having any problem with these guys wanting to climb, especially this one, this, uh, this long guy. And he's just going way up into the tent. I haven't seen any fruit set on that thing yet though. So hopefully I'm gonna start seeing something. Looks like we gotta tuck this one back in because it's starting to want to come out the door. But I'm getting a lot of fruit set, so I'm pretty happy about that. The new growth is a lot of flowering, and so there's a lot of tomatoes that Paula and I have been picking off here and putting in our salads. Besides the ones that I, you know, graft off here for myself or, or grift. Because <laughs> I I love these tomatoes. They're so good. They've got that rich taste, and, and especially, you know, these newer ones. I mean, there's a, these down there, they're really coming along on this indigo rose plant. So there's a lot of fruit set, especially up in here. And then that one back there, it's starting to get a lot of ripening. So you can see there's a red one back there forming. A couple more down in the back. And then down towards the lower end, there's some low, you know, lower ones. But uh, we're going to be set for coming into the holidays and the colder time of the year because our tomato production outside is pretty much done. The, uh, the remaining tomatoes we're finding are getting the uh, the rain, what do you call that, the rain rot? Because it start, it splits and then they just start to rot, you know? Right along the side or they're getting the, the brown or black spot on the, uh, the small cherry tomatoes. The big ones, we're still finding a lot of the big green ones that are really hard. So we're picking those and bringing them inside to ripen, but uh, they're getting few and far between. It is the, uh, the third week of October, or third weekend of October, so next weekend is Halloween. And uh, that's going to kind of pretty much shut it down. we got to bring in the lemon tree from outside. I'm probably going to bring it down here into the house and spray it off with a little uh, insecticidal soap. That way it can stay down here. It's a little warmer, and I can probably put it right next to the salad bar LED array and use some of the reflective light coming off it to keep it happy for the winter. But if not, we'll buy another LED light and hang it over top. Uh, there's the basil. You can see we've... Uh, We've got the flowering and the seed set on some of these. So I come through here and I kind of tickle them. I don't know if that's going to actually help set seed, but uh, I do that every now and then. I come through here and I kind of wiggle them and bounce them. You can see the pollen pop off. 
I don't think they have to be pollinated, but uh, I've got the wind blowing in here from the fan up above to where I keep the air circulating. And uh, one of the things I'm disappointed about with this fan that I put in is it used to be an oscillating fan, and I think the oscillator broke in it. And I've only had this thing for, I think, uh, maybe six months. I thought about taking it apart and uh, seeing if I can jerry-rig up the uh, oscillating mechanism, but I uh, haven't had time to do that with all the other projects we've been working on around here in the homestead. Poinsettia is looking really good. I went through and I trimmed off a bunch of the dead leaves, and uh, you can see it's, got, it's even got more new growth coming up through here. Some of these leaves on the, the outside here, you can see they're starting to turn. So hopefully by Christmas, this thing's going to be blazing red, so that way we'll be able to bring this out. Even at Thanksgiving, we might bring it upstairs for when we have the kids over and, you know, have our turkey dinner. But uh, I'm really happy with that little little plant there. Be sure it trucks along inside this big, large grow tent. That's kind of the update for the, uh, the tent. I need to come through here and trim off some, uh, some dead leaves that I've got in here. And I want to try my idea. I was thinking I want to take my shop back, and I'm just going to take my shop back and kind of run it along the tomato plant and uh, suck off all those dead those dead leaves. It may not suck off the limbs themselves, but I could just probably go through here and take that you know, shop vac, clean off these plants. I'll have to watch and make sure I don't try and suck on any of the fruit set, because then it'll just rip it right off of there. But uh, you know, if it rips a red one off, I guess that's for me. <laughs> All right, that's kind of the update. Everything seems to be going really well in this tent, and I sure hope that those, uh, those herbs take off, because that's really going to be a benefit for us over the winter, because these things get expensive in the summer, or expensive in the winter, and they're plentiful in the summer. So that's one of the benefits. I love to run my own tent like this, to where I can actually create a lot of the uh, the greens that I'm going to need for uh, for Paula's cooking. Because I, you know, if I, I cook things, it's like uh, I cook burnt toast. That's pretty much my uh, my culinary skill. Oh, and then the other thing I wanted to mention, I'm thinking of when this when these pretty much these these basil kind of peter out. I'm actually thinking of putting in a vertical plant wall right here to where you have these like uh, plastic containers. I saw it on one of Curtis Stone's uh, videos this last week where he's going to be doing it inside of his uh, hoop house. And you basically put your plant inside this little container. It mounts on a wall rack system, a metal rack that goes on a wall. So what I'll build is I'll build something like I have in the, uh, the salad bar LED area, a wooden frame that goes along and it has legs on it that come out to prevent it from tipping forward and falling over. But then I'll hang those inside of here, and then I'll run a drip line system or watering tube that comes up to the top and will sit and feed into each of the top ones. And I believe that if the water goes through the top one, it goes to the next bottom one, the next bottom one, you know, just kind of works its way down and it drains the excess out. And then down below, I'll put some kind of a catchment tray down below where I can catch that water and it'll drain into a bucket underneath. And then I can take that bucket and I'll dump it into one of those uh, concrete mixing trays right into where the tomato bags are and just let it get sucked up through the tomato plants. But that would give me the opportunity to grow a whole lot more vegetables along this wall and utilize this empty space here to where if you wanted to do some other kind of plants where you wanted to do your cloning, for example, for your cannabis, you could actually put those into those same type of bags, get your clones started, and then you take those out and transplant them. That way it'll give you a, a vertical means to develop more plants quicker in a space maximized area. So that's just something that I thought I'd mention. I'll put a link in the down below where I usually have all my, my uh, equipment that I'm using in these tents. I'll put a link to that company if I can find it from uh, Curtis Stone's video and I'll see if I can put it in the, the show notes so you guys can maybe check that out too. But I probably won't be buying any kind of setup like that until probably, you know, December time frame. I figure I'll still be getting harvest off of these uh, this basil here for quite a quite a while, maybe a few more months. So I may not do that until spring. I mean, who knows? It depends on how uh, how zealous I get or eager I want to try a new thing out and put it in the tent. But it'll give it some more more content for the channel, to where that way you guys will stay interested in seeing what I'm doing. All right. Well, that's kind of the update for this week. Let's spin the camera back around here. All right. It's been Brian from P&B Homesteading. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, bye guys.